Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Monday, December 3rd, 2012. I'm going to cover the economy and hopefully some police state and maybe some eugenics uh, news. Uh, the first article I have is American households hit 43-year low in net worth. The median net worth of American households has dropped to a 43-year low as uh, lower and middle classes appear poorer and less stable than they have been since 1969. And pretty much the same article, just different source. In 2010, the median net worth in the United States hit the lowest point since 69 at $57,000, according to a recent study by a NYU professor. But during that same period, income inequality skyrocketed in the U.S., well, found largely thanks to the housing bust, bubble, whatever you want to call it, Ponzi scheme, which took a significant bite out of middle-class Americans' assets, which is most of their assets and wealth is in their house. So it's pretty much an assault on middle class by uh, the wealthy. They found that the, while the middle income earners lost 18% of their net worth, those in the top 1% increased their wealth by 71% over the same period, so not a very big surprise. The findings bring into sharper relief existing evidence that average Americans are getting squeezed even tighter while the country's wealthiest watch their fortunes explode. 2010, wages fell to $26,000, its lowest level since 1999 according to a separate study. The decline in wages may have in part contributed to the growing wealth inequality, resulting in a member of the 1% worth equaling 288 times that of the median U.S. household. Loss of income caused by banks as bad as World War, says the Bank of England's Andrew Haldine. The financial takeover Christ Ponzi scheme has been economically devastating as a world war and may still be a burden on our grandchildren. Maybe it will be, but they have to call it a financial crisis so that you know they don't have to basically say what it was, which was a mass redistribution of wealth by design by the elites to squeeze out and kill the middle class. But the middle class, uh, some of them want to, like I said, keep their humongous TVs and their nice cars and stuff like that. So they'll go ahead and break themselves, uh, uh, kill themselves in order to maintain that standard of living. But yeah, but by calling it a financial crisis, it makes it sound like it was something that could have been prevented uh, had it not been for government intervention and regulations. But the end result, besides uh, consolidation, or actually a redistribution of wealth, was con consolidation of uh, banking regulations and power and wealth. Executive pay, UK top bosses see a 12% rise in pay says executive pay has trebled over the past 10 years despite the UK's banking crisis and the double-dip recession. Britain's top companies have seen pay increase by 12% on average to £4.8 million, or 185 times the average wage. Here you go, guys. It blamed the government's failure to act for the rise. So, Majority of Canada's 100 richest get richer, says a report. A new report indicates the wealthiest people in Canada have become richer than that of the previous year. We go again, proving that the government's plan to further tax the rich has failed. The data contradicts Prime Minister Harper's economic policy that should trickle down the wealth of the nation's richest to the working class. Analysts say the scheme named Trickle Down Economic Theory, which was, of course, used by what, uh, I think it was during the Reagan years, uh, but it's probably always used, which aims to spread the wealth of the richest to the poor through tax breaks and economic benefits, is fruitless in practice. Five facts about America's pathological wealth distribution. It goes on here and it says, Americans are beginning to realize that years of uh, preferential tax treatment for the rich under the guise of supply-side creation nonsense has bloated the fortunes of the super-rich to a level that would make Rockefeller and Carnegie envious. Number one, we're close to being the most unequal country in the world. Among countries with at least a quarter million adults, only Russia, Ukraine, and Lebanon are more equal, according to the most recent figures by Credit Suisse. And one of the places uh, that I saw on Yahoo's news was that Switzerland was one of the best places to be born. So as an earlier report by the same research had indicated that Denmark and Switzerland were more unequal than the United States. Wealth accumulation has been rigged for the rich. The richest quintile of Americans owns 93% of non-home wealth. For Americans with incomes over $10 million, nearly, nearly half of their incomes come from capital gains and dividends, on most of which they pay only 15% tax. It says two-thirds of all income went to the richest 1%. Then in the first year after the recession in 2009, a startling 93% of all new income went to the richest 1%. But these massive wealth holdings have accumulated for the America's richest, 
not just because of the appropriation of income, but also because of their manipulation of the tax code. Number three, as tax rates have gone down, income for the rich has gone up. A Business Insider chart depicts a remarkable yet reasonable uh, negative correlation between tax rates and the wealth of the super rich. Over the past um, century, every time tax rates have been decreased, the income percentage of the richest uh, has increased and vice versa. Other sources confirm the changes in the tax rate have little to do with economic growth and that the top tax rate can and should be much higher, up to 83%. The Reagan-era myth of higher taxes, less revenue, has been debunked. It's enough to convince any American thinking outside of Congress that our budget problems are rooted in an extraordinary degree of tax avoidance at the top. But uh, you think they're going to go after those at the top? No, they're not. They're going to go at the ones that are being squeezed and having their uh, backs broke. And another indicator or fact about uh, wealth redistribution is we should all cheer for the stock market. It is a big scam. The mainstream media would have us believe that the whole country depends on a rising stock market. It's all about growth, 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 growth. And it says here, but the lowest earning three-fifths of America's 60% of the population own just 0.2%, one-fifth of the percent of all the wealth outside the home. Yeah, and uh, it's you know it's promoted Wall Street and all that, which leads to speculation and fraud and all kinds of stuff like the bubbles. Lastly, uh, debt has masked wealth inequality for 30 years. It says the rising household debt began around uh, 1975, and before this date, the ratio of household debt to annual disposable income uh, remained fairly stable over time and rarely rose above 75 percent. But today, Americans are burdened with over 11 trillion dollars in consumer debt including mortgages, student loans, which is probably the next bubble, and credit card liabilities. As the very rich have accumulated income and wealth, the middle class has kept up appearances by taking out loans. So it says here, is this why Americans have lost the drive to earn more? In the recent past, we noted that uh, the somewhat startling reality of the single mom is better off earning gross income of $29,000 with $57,000 in net income and benefits than to earn gross income of 69000 with net income and benefits of 57000 says, while mathematics is our tool as opposed to math magics of some of our more politically biased media who don't like our message, says that for uh, increasingly more Americans, it is now more lucrative in the form of actual disposable income to sit, do nothing, and collect various welfare entitlements than to work. The graphic below clearly and very painfully confirms that there is an uh, earnings vacuum of around $40,000 in which U.S. workers are perfectly ambivalent towards inputting uh, more effort since it does not result in any additional incremental uh, disposable income. It says for about every one and a half employed persons in the private sector, one person receives wel welfare assistance. And um, the thing is, is that whatever they're going to do in the near future as far as the, quote, fiscal cliff, um, what I see happen is, is they're not going to stop funding uh, military contractors. Um, they're not going to stop subsidizing the energy sector. They're not going to stop uh, uh, other types of spending, um, including paying for um, Israeli army. Basically, we fund Israel's army, uh, funding uh, social programs such as basically eugenics overseas. Uh, we're all funding that, but uh, they're going to make this a big issue uh, because like every other type of warfare, um, there's economic warfare, there's generational warfare, social warfare. So this is just another tool in their arsenal. And until really the Federal Reserve System, the private central banks are shut down and eliminated, um, things change. I, I don't really think, think it's going to get much better. They're just going to put a bandaid over this problem. Unemployment in the Eurozone rises to a new high. Unemployment in the Eurozone rose to a new high in October, according to the numbers released. But the head of the European Central Bank tempered the bad news by predicting the region's economy would begin to recover next year. We haven't got out, in, out of the crisis yet, or basically the effects of um, uh, the financial heist. Says the recovery uh, for the entire Eurozone will no doubt begin in the second half of 2013, in other words, to be able to take on a shitload of debt again. While you might only be able to get part-time work in 2013, operators of small businesses are going to be cutting full-time employees through 2013 to under 50 to stay under uh, the forced health insurance bill tax. British economy risks entering the triple-dip recession. So they say triple-dip because... They don't want to admit that they've been in a depression or a recession ever since uh, the, the 
international banking heist tax hitmen to track your spending up to 2 million people are to have their credit files secretly checked under a crackdown on tax evasion to be unveiled by George Osborne to help raise another 10 million pounds. The Chancellor indicated yesterday that he was preparing a new round of welfare cuts and tax rises for the wealthy this week. So basically credit reference agencies will cross-check details of the income people declare on their tax returns against their spending patterns to identify high medium risk of legal tax avoidance. Okay, so it says about 2 million people are to be expected to be scrutinized under the program, which may lead to privacy concerns. The 10 revenue collectors, or the tax man, seeks permission to break speed limit along with the emergency crews answering calls. They said the exemption for its covert surveillance vehicles. But to see how much I really do care about uh, uh, tax revenue uh, from everybody even the rich. Two-thirds of millionaires left Britain to avoid 50% tax rate. We're not talking about billionaires and multi-billionaires and stuff like that. We're talking about millionaires that, you know, own small businesses, medium businesses that create jobs and that. Almost two-thirds of the economies of the country's million-pound earners disappeared from Britain after the introduction of a 50 pence uh, top rate of tax. Uh, from 2009 to 2010, that tax year, more than 16,000 people declared income above uh, that amount of £1 million, but the number fell to just 6,000 after Gordon Brown introduced the uh, uh, top rate of income tax shortly before the last election. It goes on and says that uh, it actually led to a loss in revenue for the government. Next up, Britain rejects the idea of naming and shaming tax-dodging firms. Uh, so it says that a senior British minister has come to the defense of top tax evaders in the country rejecting ideas to name and shame companies which are paying little or no corporate tax. Some of the companies that were included uh, in this report were Amazon, Google, and Starbucks using secretive uh, jurisdictions, royalties, and complex company structures to avoid paying tax on British profit. Then for uh, homeowners, mortgage interest tax deduction might be eliminated. A tax break that has long been untouchable could soon be in for some serious scrutiny. Many home buyers deduct their mortgage interest when assessing their tax bill, a perk that has helped bolster the income of millions of families in the broader housing market. But as Obama and Congress try to hash out a deal to reduce the budget deficit, the mortgage interest deduction will likely be part of the discussion. Lastly, limits on a broad array of deductions could emerge in any budget deal, and it's likely that any caps would be structured to aim at high-income households and would diminish or end the mortgage tax break for many of those taxpayers. And HSBC to start selling 25 billion pounds of toxic U.S. debt. The bank is preparing its first sale of subprime loans since the height of the financial crash crisis as Britain's largest bank begins to offload more than $40 billion of toxic U.S. debt it still holds on its books. The Treasury Department borrowed $24 billion in one day after Thanksgiving. It says they raised the national debt by more than $24 billion on the day after Thanksgiving, increasing it to an alarming rate of $211.69 per U.S. household and bringing it to its highest level in history. Topping off at $16.3 trillion, Friday's debt was the highest on U.S. record, and the numbers skyrocketed after the Treasury Department took the day off on Thanksgiving, holding off on borrowing for just one day. But while Americans stayed home to say thanks and celebrate their annual feast, the economy grew worse overnight. It says here, while Obama first took office in 2009, the national debt was $10 trillion. Throughout the course of his presidency, as it increased by $5.7 trillion, the equivalent of $50,000 per household. And the greatest thing is that he can say, what? Well, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't on my watch. It was Bush's fault. Why $16 trillion only hints at the true U.S. debt. It says here, while Washington wrestles up with the roughly $600 billion fiscal cliff, and the 2013 budget says far greater fiscal challenges of the U.S. government's unfunded pension and health care liabilities remain off stage. The important figures would appear on federal balance sheet that the government prepared an accurate one, but it hasn't so far. As the U.S. Treasury balance sheet does list liabilities such as Treasury debt issued to the public, federal employee pensions, post-retirement health benefits. It does not include the unfunded liabilities of Medicare, Social Security, and other outsized and uh, very real obligations. Says we often hear about the alarming 15.9 trillion in national debt, more than 100% of GDP. The actual liabilities of federal government, including Social Security and all that, uh, goes on says has already exceeded 86 trillion dollars, or 550% of GDP.
and uh, Jamie Dimon best to lead Treasury in the crisis, says Buffett. This, of course, is, as you know, the J.P. Morgan CEO who had to apologize for $2 billion in trading losses. This is GGN. Thank you.